Let's take a quick detour into one of the homework problems. There was a request for section uh, homework, chapter one, section one, problem number five, which has some variation of the following. We're given that an angle gamma is equal to angle beta, and angle alpha is 13 times angle beta, and we're asked to find the three angles. This is not a solving triangles problem. This is just uh, a question that actually concerns one of the things that we want to know about any triangle. So we're going to use the fact that the sum of the angles in any triangle is 180. So here's what we know. We know that alpha plus beta plus gamma is 180 degrees. The sum of the angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. The other information we have is that angle gamma is equal to angle beta. And angle alpha is 13 times angle beta. So I want to combine all this information to try to figure out what the angles are. So, Notice that the two additional pieces of information relate one of the angles to beta. So I'm going to take this piece of information that alpha gamma is equal to beta, and I'm going to replace angle gamma with beta. This other piece of information says that alpha can be written as 13 beta. So I'm going to take this piece of information and replace alpha with the 13 beta. I'm going to leave the beta where it is. Everything is being written in terms of beta. So now, instead of having an equation, alpha plus beta plus gamma equals 180 degrees, that is one equation with three different variables in it, I now have one equation with one variable in it. And then we can solve. Now that everything's in terms of beta, I can add 13 beta, 14 beta, 15 beta is 180 degrees. So beta is 180 degrees divided by 15. I'm going to grab my calculating machine and say, oops, 180 divided by 15, 12. So now I know that beta is equal to 12. I'm going to go back to my original couple of statements where alpha, uh, gamma is equal to beta. Since gamma is equal to beta, gamma is also 12 degrees. And then the third piece of information where alpha is 13 beta, Thirteen times twelve is one point six. Any questions? Quick detour to do a homework problem. Your numbers might be different. Instead of a thirteen, it might be a different value. I think on all the variations of this problem, it gives you an isosceles triangle. It says two of these angles are the same, and then this third one is a multiple of one of those. How's everybody okay? You sure? You all look very sad. You all look like this. I, I can't tell how you look, but it's got this sad feeling in the room. It's because it's afternoon. And the sleepy. Afternoons are terrible for me. I don't like doing stuff in afternoons. This is when we should be like all taking a nap. Whatever happened to nap time? 
Why do only kids get to have nap time in school? Now, some of you are like, oh, this is a math class. This is nap time for me. You just like come to class with sunglasses on. I think my post teaching plans are to an open uh, are to open an insomnia clinic. I'm gonna go around. I have a revolutionary cure for insomnia. It's gonna be great because I don't have to change anything that I do. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Only I'm gonna get some more comfortable chairs, some softer lighting, maybe a couple of candles. Maybe instead of this hum of the HVAC system play some Enya or something, and then just switch to soothing voice. So here we're going to talk about human learners of the world. And the alpha is just the fun. How did you learn this? It's a fun. It's a very sound. It's going to be awesome. That's why these chairs have to be so uncomfortable. I don't know if you've noticed this, but for me, all these chairs, it like they pitch forward a little bit. It's like it's trying to dump you into your work. It's awful. This is because the support is in the wrong part of the chair, in the seat of the chair. So like when the way people sit on it, it turns out you sit, it crunches. And so now it's leans, it leans forward from the. I don't know if it was designed to be that uncomfortable in the beginning, but it's just, that's, that's how it is. Here's an example of uh, solving right triangles problem. I have to give you one more part. I've given you a right triangle. That's, that's one part. I've given you this angle, 62 degrees. And I have to give you one more part. I have to give you one of the sides. And I think side C is equal to 15. So I've given you three pieces of this triangle, the right angle, a 62 degree angle at alpha, and a hypotenuse of 15. Our job is gonna find the remaining three parts, A, side A, side B, and angle beta. According to best practices, what's the first thing that we should go after? We have a 90 degree angle, a 62 degree angle, and a hypotenuse of 15. What should we do? Subtract to find angle beta. As soon as we have two angles of a triangle, we should subtract to find the third. That's just the easiest one to get. So beta is 90 minus 62. That's why we want to subtract as soon as we have two angles, because it's easiest. Now it becomes way more difficult because we have choices. I need to go for side A or side B. And I have many ways to find side A and many ways to find side B. As soon as we know four things about a triangle, we have to start making decisions. 
I'm just going to go alphabetical. Let's find side A. Let's find side A next. What is A relative to our given angle of 62 degrees? What do I call A? How is A related to 62? It's opposite 62. What's the other side that we know? The hypotenuse. So I'm a th we're thinking that we notice that A is opposite 62 degrees. The other thing that we have is 15 is the hypotenuse. What trig function involves opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So noticing that A is opposite to 62 and that 15 is a hypotenuse, this means we are deciding to use sine. So we'll say sine of 62 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. We're trying to figure out what A is. So I'm just gonna multiply both sides by 15. So A is 15 times a sine of 62. I type it like I see it, 15 sine 62, and we get 13.2. Any questions? On our uh, phone style text uh, calculator, I have to do things a little bit differently because I can't type sign then 62. The sign button on our phone takes the sign of whatever is on the screen. So if I type 62 first and then press the sign button, I still just have to multiply by 15 times 15. And we get the same one, 13.2. If we start the typing uh, the 15 first, we forget that we're on phone calculator, it'll still be fine. We just go 15 times. I'm like, oh man, I don't want the sign of 15. I can't press sign right now because it'll take the sign of 15. So I put 62 and then press sign, then I can press equals. So we've got some syntax that we should make a note of. TI syntax, Texas syntax. We just type it like we see it. 15, sign, 62, close parentheses, enter. On our phone, we're gonna have to do things a little bit differently. I, if I start off with 15, I hit the times button, then I'd put in the 62 and then hit the sign button and then hit equals. Or I can switch the order of my multiplication because multiplication is commutative, but I like to type it like we see it as much as we possibly can.
So once again, I could put, I could put 62 sine times 15 or 15 times 62 sine equals. questions? I've got side A and I've got the hypotenuse. What can we do to find the third side? We've got two sides of a right triangle. What can we do to find the third side? We could do cosine 62. That would work. What else could we do? We could use Pythagorean theorem. That would work. What about tangent? Could I use tangent at all? Yeah, the A is opposite the 62. That's, uh, and we know that now. And B is adjacent to 62. Opposite and adjacent is tangent. What about the 28? Could I use the 28 at all? Absolutely. A is adjacent to the 28, but up there. A is adjacent to the 28, so I could use that. There are many ways that we can get at the third side. So good news, there are many ways we can get at that third side. Bad news, there are many ways that we can get at that third side. And we just have to pick one. The best one to do is whatever occurs to you to do first. The best one to do is the one that occurs to you in the moment. I try to use as much of the given information as possible. So instead of using the 13.2 in the Pythagorean theorem, I'd want to use the 15 and the 62 and the 28 if I can, because none of that's been rounded off. That 13.2 is a little suspect because it's been rounded off. Well, we have many options for finding side B. questions so now let's do every single one of those options make sure that we can see all of them in play if we do that right now then trigonometry will be super easy for the whole rest of the semester if i do that right now it'll just make everything click so, ah i see all of trigonometry no matter what else i throw at you the whole rest of the semester will just be super easy, fairly an inconvenience. But I have to do this right now. If I don't do this right now, then we're going to have to go through trigonometry at a normal rate and struggle with it just like we were going to before today. So let me do all those options right now so that trigonometry will be super easy and you'll understand it as much as I do. Ah, oh, dang, look at the time. I guess we'll just have to wait. What I want you to do is I want you to explore the options that you have for solving for B. And I want you to go back to solving for A. We had an option there as well. We actually could have found A without finding the angle 28, but best practices says, as soon as you have two angles, find the third angle. All right, well, that's gonna do it for today. I will see you all on Tuesday. Everybody have a good weekend and thanks for playing.